What's well, your question? Can can Jen have sex with humans? Yeah, I, I've never heard of such a question before. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to say to that. To be honest, with all right. You. Well, I mean, I, the reason why I say that is like I'm not sure what you're expecting. You're asking me if something that you don't believe in can appropriate with something that you that you do believe in, right? So to me, it's like it's just kind of a, a wonky question. Like, what would that do for you if I gave you an answer? Let's just have fun with it. No, what what would that do now? I, I can give you another reason I asked the question. I was watching yeah. the movie, uh, The Boy with the Giant Hands. It's a kid named Mohammed out of India, and he has localized giganticism in his hands. You're so, obsessed with chin stories. What's wrong with you, man? See, you guys say I'm obsessed. <laughs> Last time I was on The Muslim Cowboy, I didn't even bring it up, and one of the other the guests brought it up, so now I'm owning it. Okay, so let me make sure I'm understanding you correctly. You're saying that... The that you have parents and then you have kids and these are two of the same generation no no you have adam and eve that's one generation right and then they have a set of twins that's the second generation then they have another set of twins that's a third generation no that's the same generation how is that how is that not a third generation if it's a different age if it's a different age group it's a different generation isn't it so in islam just to be clear if your sister is 20 years younger than you, she is no, 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 to you. no, no, incest is haram in Islam. Yeah, but there was a time when it wasn't because of the okay. circumstances. Like I said earlier, you know, there's different times and different interpretations. Just I give you the example about homosexuality right now. So eighth is at that time, even they, even though they, they had no issues, but they were following the moral, the morality of the thieves at that time, which was, mm. it was immoral for them but now it's love but you see 100 years from today if incest becomes oh love of mother for the son or the son for the father then who are you to say you know stop them from loving each other just like the way you as an atheist cannot stop uh, anyone who says we love each other of the same sex Hashim do you remember me you remember uh, my question I don't actually uh, refresh my memory. All right. Well, we got a new guy here. Maybe he can answer. And Mansoor says no waffling. So <laughs> a new guy. Go for it. Let's go. <laughs> can Jin procreate with humans? Can who? Jin. Jin. The shaitan. We don't know. I don't think so. Okay. He says no. He doesn't think so. Yeah. Why is that important question? What is that? It's not important. It's just okay. a question. Oh. But- what but, were you expecting? Are you are you an atheist, agnostic? I am an atheist. Or, you're an atheist. Oh, okay. okay, cool. Do you believe in jinn? No. <laughs> oh, well, why even ask the question then, man? Well, I'm just curious. Book. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very curious. I don't no believe problem, in Buddhism either, but I like listening to the Buddhists. I didn't oh, right on, right represent on. Buddhism too well. I thought I could have done a better job, but anyway. All right. <laughs> All right. So what's so, on your mind, man? What's, yeah. Why Where are you joining from again, Michael, from the U.S.? Yes, I'm the great state of Florida, the free oh. state of Florida. That's nice. Tampa Bay. Disney World. <laughs> so the, the, new, the new guy doesn't want to answer? What's what your question? question? Can can Jen have sex with humans? Yeah, I, I've never heard of such a question before. Like, I don't, oh, I don't yeah. even know what to say to that, to be honest. With All you. right. Well, I mean, I, the reason why I say that is like, I'm not sure what you're expecting. You're asking me if something that you don't believe in can appropriate with something that you, that you do believe in. Right. So to me, it's like, it's just kind of a, a wonky question. Like, what would that do for you? If I gave you an answer, let's just have fun with it. No. What, what would that do now? Okay. Well, you would, you would contradict uh, many of the great scholars in Islam. Okay. Me- who? Who? Ibn been Who? Ibn Taymiyyah. A i m a y y a. So Ibn Taymiyyah said what? Humans Ibn can have sex Ibn. with jinns. He said it was. Uh, let me read no, to you from the book procreate. here. You said procreate, right? The I whole- did. I, I oh, said okay. both. Oh, okay, okay. What did What did Ibn Taymiyyah say? He said here. Let me quote. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah said, "Quote." Humans and jinn have gotten married and have had children. This has happened often and is well known. This is from page 22 of the book, The World of Jinn and Devils, written by Dr. Omar Suleiman, A-L-A-S-H-Q-A-R. 
Okay, so mm-hmm. all right. I mean, that's his opinion. That's that's mm-hmm. fine. It's yeah. it doesn't mean that this is the belief of everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I, I can give you another reason I asked the question. I was watching yeah. the movie, uh, The Boy with the Giant Hands. It's a kid named Mohammed out of India, and he has localized giganticism in his hands. You're also, obsessed with chin stories. What's wrong with you, man? See, you guys say I'm obsessed. Last time I was on the Muslim Cowboy, I didn't even bring it up, and one of the other the guests brought it up, so now I'm owning it. No, but it's, it's quite that. it's quite strange. Look, if if I don't believe in unicorns and I okay, speak I'm about strange. the unicorns all day long, what do you think I am like? What are you, just because I bring up stories of the unicorn? I, I would um, think you're an eight year old girl trapped in a man's body. Right, and if an atheist doesn't believe in jinn and he keeps talking about jinn, then what? I don't know. Nine-year-old you, you, girl, you, you judge trapped me in a jeans body. You, you, there you go. Maybe okay, I'm so anyway, look, give us something maybe, that's maybe, that's maybe I'm a shaitan disguised as an atheist. You believe in shaitan? Maybe this is the was was. Do you believe in the shaitan? No. Again, so don't project your I don't know disbeliefs on us. So anyway, look, give us something that's rational yeah. that will be productive in this. Okay. Yeah, well, here's what's interesting to me, man. I, and yeah. this is why I have a, a a a very interesting love with atheists, right? Because number one, I used to be one, but number two, you guys yeah, have a fascination with the unseen. No, 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 not way good for me, man. Because what I found is I was consumed with arrogance, and and that arrogance was leading to so much ignorance in my life that it was it was very suffocating to be honest with you. So I'm wondering, you know, why you have such a fascination with the things that are unseen? Uh, I don't know. Why do you have a fascination with the creation of the world? You know, why, why do we study quantum physics? Why do yeah. it's just yeah. fascinating? We believe, the world, we believe the world, the universe exists, and we as human beings have always been curious to know where all this came from. Sure. Okay. Sure. So if I, if I were to ask you the so same, my, my question, curiosity is bad. Yours is good. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. We you, you no no. Your curiosity stems from things you don't believe in, whereas my we both believe in existence of reality. So let's not compare apples and oranges here. Yeah, mm-hmm. my curiosity of the existence of the world is to get closer to my creator, to have a greater appreciation for the things that he created. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's the difference. But, so yeah, mine's the opposite. Yeah, so well, you, if you're here just for trolling and mocking, then you might as well go elsewhere who has time okay. for you, okay? Because you stood in the back studio for, I don't know what, maybe an hour or even more. I was I, hoping, I, I was hoping I you this, would engage in some productive discussion. But if you're just here to off, troll, you're on the wrong panel. I had the sound off while Philo was on. I heard him before, and the Muslim cowboy, I think it was. I was yeah. watching a television show. But anyways, I was talking to Miris here a little bit in the chat, but so anyways, you didn't, can I ask Miris to answer his question on what is a generation if it's not siblings? A generation. So you have a generational gap, right? So the first generation, the first offspring, and then you have a second generation then third generation, fourth generation. But if, if your parents are the same, you're not a generational gap. How do you figure that? Because that's the definition of a generation. You have the parents and then their children. Are the, and then children, the grandchildren. Are the children a new generation for, apart from the parents? Or are they Correct. part of the same generation? If you Correct. okay, so let me make sure I'm understanding you correctly. You're saying that th- that you have parents and then you have kids, and these right. are two of the same generation. No, no. You have Adam okay. and Eve. That's one generation. Right. And then they have a set of twins. That's the second generation. Then they have another set of twins. That's a third generation. No, that's the same generation. How is that? The, how is that not a third generation? If it's a because different age, they, if it's a different age group, it's a different generation, isn't it? No. no. Yeah. So, for how? example, your parents are of a different generation. Age generation, age group. Y generation. You are of a different age generation. generation, generation age group. It's it's okay, it's quite but you, you, you keep comparing me to my parents. We're not talking about. We're not talking about my parents. Unless you, are you saying? Adam has sex with his daughter? No. Okay. No, man. We're saying, okay. look, your parents were one generation. What are they? What what generation are your parents? Uh, I don't know. Before baby boom, they were born in the 30s. So not the same as you, boomers. right? Not the same generation as you. Either, no, right? Of course That's not. What I was saying. So the you generation have... gap is there, obviously. Okay. I think generally it's like 25, 30 years normally. But it's, you see, this is 
for humans it's, of today, it's 20 years. Yes, generally. Yeah. But gen you, you guys are missing what, what, what the conversation was, Hazem. Okay, I know you're so trying to... You're trying to bring in the conversation we had earlier about right. in incest and so on. Am I right? Correct. But you see, Correct. as an atheist, you shouldn't have a problem with incest. Oh, I do have a problem with incest. It's, it's you unnatural. do? Why? It, it creates disease. Well, what if you what if you had sex with your with the same sex? Well, that creates disease too. I'm not. Okay. I'm not for homosexuality. It doesn't. Either. In that case, even like, heterosexual diseases are there. STDs. That means sure. you shouldn't have. You should be. You should be a nun. They can. But no? can, can can we get our generations figured out first? Sure. No, but you're, you're, you're you, you have added that. Let's cut to the chase, man. Let's cut to no, the you, chase. You have your main objection me. is the incest, not the generation. Am I right? Well, it's what the incest creates. No, but that's in, what I'm saying in, to you. For just, you as an atheist, you disagree on what the word generation means, and I want to get it straight so I know what generation means because I think well, it's Well, look quite up the dictionary, my friend. Look I did, and I, I posted it. Look, yeah. on, I, what does it say? What does it say in the dictionary? Just, I'm gonna. T what is the second? What is the definition according to the dictionary? It says the average interval of time between the birth of parents and the birth of their offspring. That's right. What yeah. That's what I said. Okay, Remember? but the, the offspring are a generation unto right. themselves. Right. So right. when Adam and Eve has Cain and girl, let's call her Mary, right? That's a set of twins. Then they have Cain, or did I say Cain? Anyway, Abel, Abel and Mary, Cain and Deborah. How many? Okay. How many generations is that? That's there's two generations we're talking about: the parents and the siblings. No, you no, have, three generations. You have the the parents, the first set of siblings, and the second set of siblings. Okay, yeah. so you're saying my sister is not of my generation. It depends no. when your sister was my born. Definition is it, yeah. Well, it, it could be. It depends born. when your sister was born. Okay. If it's so, 20 years later, then she's a different generation. Okay, so then I could have sex with my sister if she's 20 years younger. Like I said, for you as an atheist, you shouldn't have a moral issue anyway. <laughs> okay. Because you don't have any basis for morality. I, I it's thought nilly there was nilly no right here. Today, that, that today like it could be moral, tomorrow it could be immoral. For example, you know, there were people 100 years from today where they considered homosexual to be crime and it was punishable Absolutely. by law. Yeah, but then the yeah. morality changes. So yep. for you as an atheist, morality is like, fashion it can change okay yeah so in islam you don't have a basis if, for morality so so in islam just to be clear if your sister is 20 years younger than you she is no 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 incest not... is haram in islam yeah but there was a time when it wasn't because of the okay. circumstances like i said earlier you know there's different times and different interpretations just i give you the example about homosexuality right now so eight is at that time even they even though they they had no issues but they were following the moral the morality of the thieves at that time which was mm -hmm. it was immoral for them but now it's love but you see 100 years from today if incest becomes oh love of mother for the son or the son for the father then who are you to say you know sure, stop them sure. from loving yeah. each other just like the way you as an atheist cannot stop uh, anyone who says we love each other of the same sex. So that's why I'm asking you, for you as an atheist, what is your moral standard? It is just shifting sand, basically, isn't it? It changes. It, it is. It is subjective, and it, it can shift. There's yeah. no doubt about that. So earlier you said you have an issue with incest. What is your issue? I, I told you it, it, it leads to retardation. Retardation, not with the same sex. There's no, no, no possibility of that. That's true. So is it okay with the same sex incest? No, I would I would ban that as well. Why is that? It's unnatural. Well, if the if the thesis tells you that homosexuality is unnatural. Yeah, I have no no problem with laws against homosexuality. Why you have no problem? It's not natural. I'm confused. I said but, I have no problems with laws against. Okay, so are you are you saying homosexuality is natural or not natural? Unnatural. So are you against it? Yes. Based on what? Because it's unnatural. Yes. What if they say they love each other? Doesn't matter. You can so, love a dog. You can't have sex with a dog. You well, shouldn't. Some, depends, you know. <laughs> well, in Germany, I think. <laughs> exactly. Zoology, I forget what it's called. Zoo something. But yeah. And yeah, there are is. people, yeah. and there are people, uh, apparently there's some sort of weird syndrome where twins get separated at birth. Right. So when you say, life, because. They fall in love. And now yeah. I think there was a case I, in Germany. I agree. Brother I sister agree. To, to get I, married. 
I totally agree having sex with animals is completely unnatural. But for these guys saying that same sex marriage is pretty natural because they love each other. I have a, I have a deeper question, Michael, if you want to entertain it, is it the, because of the, the way that the progeny was, um, kind of expanded, that's preventing you from believing in God. Is that what's kind of the holdup? Oh, no, no, there's, there's a lot more to it than that. What's stopping you from believing in God? Well, uh, all the divine revelations I've come across, and again, I've, you know, I've read the Bible, obviously, I went to 12 years of Catholic school. Mm -hmm. um, and I've read the Quran and, and some Sunnah, some Hadiths. Um, God just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You know, intelligent design doesn't seem very intelligent to me. Um, what do you mean by what do you mean by that? So like, when you read the Quran, what? What didn't make sense to you? Well, I mean, you got Gog and Magog trapped behind a giant rampart in a mountain range by the Thalcomain, the two horned king. Um, obviously, you got Jin, the 72nd Sir is Jin. Uh, by the way, where if you go to like the Ishik, he'll, he'll tell you Jin can have sex with humans. Uh, it's from verse 55 56, of which men and Jin have not touched. Um, and one of the reasons I asked that question is again, you guys both said no. Um, let's see, Muslim Lantern said yes, but only if they first possess a human. Um, another guy on what was it, Denecticot, Denec dots connected to Islam or something like that, then they banned me. Hamza, Hamza banned me from his from Hamza Den. Uh, he was the first guy asked, Where do you get this from, mate? Blah, blah. I'm like, Well, I read a book, it's in the Quran. What are you talking about? But, um, yeah, but I, don't, I don't think it's in the Quran unless you can give me a reference to that. Um, yeah, well, 55, 56 in the beneficial, the benefits or whatever. It, 55, uh, 56. So correct. Surah Ar-Rahman and 56 in both gardens will be maidens of modest gaze with no human. I just talk about the whole line. Yeah, that's that's from the different realm. Yeah, you. So you understand that we believe that jinn are also going to get judged, right? Sure, they have free will. Right. So, where are you alluding that this is saying that there is a a connection between humans touching jinn and jinn touching humans? No, I think it's what the Quranic ayah is saying that they have basically been untouched by anyone. It doesn't necessarily mean sex. Mm -hmm. it means they haven't even seen them. They haven't even touched them. This is what it means. They yeah, even... it. Link yeah, that. it doesn't Probably. literally mean like somebody can have sex with them. But you see, okay. look, the, the important thing here is that when we talk about things from another realm, yeah, we cannot comprehend it. So Allah uses language which we can understand because obviously what's in that realm in, in Jannah is going to be completely different. It's like what no eyes have seen, what no ears have heard, no mind has comprehended, you know. But Allah gives us a glimpse of that through an through analogies from this world. Okay, okay. Well, this is this is a good example of one reason I'm not religious or why I probably won't ever become a Muslim, is that you guys can't agree on what the Quran says. I've had Muslims tell me the exact opposite. Um, I forget his name. It was on Muslim Cowboy, but the guy, well, first of all, on dots to Islam or connect dots to Islam, whatever it was. The one guy, the Brazilian guy is like, what? I've never heard of this. I'm 40 years old, blah, blah, blah. The other guy who didn't have his face on, he had like a little bug looking avatar thing, uh, said, oh no, I, I know a sister who's, you know, visited in her sleep and is sexually aroused, you know, by what, what the Greeks would call a succubus, I guess. And I just put, posted a link backstage on the e Sheik if you want to read his page on, again, he references that verse and uh the other guy also said yeah no that that means have sex have have not touched he was like they're virgins mm -hmm. now obviously you could argue i think might be part of your argument is that, that yeah, but verse when you're when you're men not having touched. sex with women and female gin having sex or male gin having sex with female yeah. gin because they're both possibly going to heaven if they're you know not the shaitan and not good people or whatever yeah, so like uh, Maurice said, you know, the jinn also have a moral uh, compass. So they can be believing jinn, they can be uh, kuffar jinn, you know, who are disbelievers. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like we get rewarded, they'll get rewarded as well. Mm -hmm. But the important thing, the what Allah is mentioning with regards to the Aurul Ain is that they have been untouched 
physically in any way, shape, or form. Okay. And, okay. And when you say hurul ain, you mean like virgins, right? No. Or so hurul ain is actually yeah, hurul ain are a creation of Allah, and they are not like the women of the world. Many people misunderstand this. They they are a creation of Allah, a separate creation. Okay. And yes, we will be given this hurul ain when I say we the believers, and they will be the wives so of the of, of to whom they have been rewarded and they will have sex with them yes right they're like heavenly concubines wives concubines wives. are not wives okay allah well, says azwaj mutahara okay so these are pure wives of the okay, believers so hang on hashim i yeah. just just out of sheer curiosity i just decided to open up this link did you actually read what you sent me bro michael yeah years ago i read it okay yeah. So <laughs> listen to the That's condition. Good. So the condition mm -hmm. is that that the person is asleep, right? And okay. now you so so I'm going to ask you what is your understanding or what what comes to mind when you think that a a jinn is having intercourse with somebody? What it, what like comes to your mind when you when you well, say that. yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out when he first I, asked you that know what I'm saying? I, because it's only me, later on he said is the ones who are possessed. And that yeah. makes a huge difference. Well, Okay. Hey, go ahead, bro. I'm curious now. Okay. Uh, well, first, um, I, I pulled up the link I sent you. Okay. The truth is, it is possible for human beings and jinns to have intercourse, and Al Tahabiya be some I don't know mentioned in his tough tough seer that mm -hmm. is the meaning of and be of O Iblis a partner in their human beings. There's a lot of brackets here. I'm not reading wealth and children. Well, that's important. You got to read. You got to read it all, and you just gives context. Well, I'm, I'm saying I'm not verbalizing it. I can but, see them. Yeah, but, but you're blowing the context, man. You got so here's what the context is according to this person's question from 2011, and he asked some, you know, sheikh, some random sheikh. Right. So I, I married for 24 years, and he's saying that that he's noticed that when his wife is asleep, that she would be right. Angry. She gets aroused. Yes, yeah, she gets aroused, and that she would be angry from being woken up. Uh, so she thinks I'm crazy when I discuss this with her. Um, and then it says she, uh, the answer is she is right. The sense that these types of dreams like nightmares are a dream or an illusion from shaitan only in the sense of inspiration. So I'm going to ask you a personal question. You have you had a wet dream? Sure. Sure. Okay. So that's what this is alluding to. Did you actually have intercourse with somebody or not? No, no, of course not. But okay. I mean, Females don't have wet dreams as much as males. Obviously, you have to release matter. your sperm at some point. It, it doesn't but, matter. It doesn't matter if you if if it's not as often. It's the fact that they have the capacity that their imagination and their uh, they can be. Oh, absolutely. They, okay. they can be aroused by dreams. Okay. okay did did great. you? Okay. So now, did you? Con did yeah. you continue reading? Yeah, of course I did. I read the whole thing in its entirety. That's why okay. I wanted to prod you on on what your understanding of this stuff. Okay. So, Here it is. So what 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 the you know when you're when you are exploring things from an Islamic viewpoint, when I read this, I think you and I get two completely different understandings. So my takeaway from this stuff is that the best possible approach when you are going to have an intimate time with your partner is to actually go and seek refuge from the accursed shaitan through God Almighty, uh, and from God Almighty because you are about to conduct an act in which procreation is possible. And you want to have the best of intentions with the best possible conditions in order for your child to uh, not only to conceive, but also to have the best blessings of this creator, right? So if you read this in context, it says here that um, when a man has intercourse with his wife and does not name Allah, the jinn coils around his urethra and has right. intercourse along with him so now here's what you're probably thinking you're probably thinking that there's some you know entity that's literally <laughs> literally participating in the act right right this is not the situation the the very thing that he's saying is that you are inviting the evils of this world to come influence you because it is a very lowly act meaning that you're going to be you're going to be thinking with the lower orifices of your of your nature so what uh what 
uh, you're being reminded of is to go and seek refuge from that stuff in order for it not to get corrupted in some way, shape, or form and approach it with the best possible intentions. So what you've done is you've actually essentially taken something which is beneficial, skewed it, and now you've translated it to, therefore, God doesn't exist. And that's just not okay, man. It's just not okay. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the guy says you have to, you know, invoke Allah before you have sex or your children may be yeah. or something, right? You have to seek refuge in Allah. You know, that's what okay. Man, Anything you do, we seek refuge in Allah all the time. When we start, before we read the Quran, we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, which is we seek refuge in Allah. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, from the Shaitan who's cursed. So even before we start reading the Quran, we seek refuge in Allah. There's nothing wrong in that. And with regards to your question whether having sex with jinn is possible or not, the, the scholars themselves differ on that. Because, you know, to be honest, it's not something which we... We, we talked about in, a, in our daily life. It doesn't impact us. Uh, well, at least the majority of us, you know, there are some people who do get possessed and we believe in the jinn possession uh, as Muslims. It's something which, because the jinn is not from our realm, we don't see it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it cannot affect us. It can affect us. But, you know, for you, I think the important question is because one thing is certain, whether you believe in God or you disbelieve in God, is that we will die one day. So, Michael, what if I were to ask you that one day if you die and there really is God and there is angels and there is uh, hell and heaven, then what would, how would you actually react to that situation? Right, right. No, I know, uh, was it Pascal's wager, Pascal's gambit? Right. Mansoor, there's a lot of static in your microphone. I'm just going to mute you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's classical, you know, Pascal's yeah. wager, I think it's called, you know, better to believe in their God and there not be one than not. What's, your, in their what's your response to that? I would hope this benevolent God who created all of creation would understand why I did not follow his divine guidance, whether it be Christian or Jewish or Muslim or Zoroastrian or Buddhist or Hindu, uh, because it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, yeah, but I would when you say national God, who when you say it doesn't make sense to you, everything that you deliberated so far is is to be honest irrelevant to your. If there was God and there is salvation for you, it's completely irrelevant. You never question about why there is no God or what is the possibility if there is a God. You know, these are the major questions which you should be asking rather than the jinn possessions and mm -hmm. incest of Adam and Eve's children and so on. You see what I mean? Something that really oh. impacts you in your afterlife. Can I just add something here? Can you hear me? I'm just changing yeah, my microphone. Yeah, it's better now. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, okay. yeah, just yeah. using the laptop now. Um, Michael, you see, when it comes to understanding the existence of the creator through a particular book, for example, by looking at the actions and attributes, there's two different things, okay? So if you're thinking like, okay, there are, in, there are realms or some realities which are not physical, we're talking about in the... In the, in the real realms of metaphysical or supernatural, based on this, how you assess, how you judge, you are saying the creator exists or not. I mean, the problem with this approach is when you are dealing with, you know, something that's we say still there are different reality. It's like a different dimension. If you, you want to use this term, which people are familiar with, something's in a different dimension itself is difficult to grasp and comprehend because you're not within that dimension. So there seems to be an interplay, but they're not necessarily merging or mixing. Okay, whatever merging and mixing happens is still very limited in scope. So when our scholars talk about if they do, like, okay, the jinns and the human beings can intermix and so on and so forth, there's a very limited scope of things happening. That doesn't automatically somehow, because of the differences between Muslim scholars or even the very concept of, you know, these jinns and humans mixing, automatically disproves God. It doesn't, okay? So even if, say, the Quran talks about jinns having intimate relationship with this, these are matters of the unseen, a different dimension, different reality. This does not affect the existence of God. When you say Zul Qarnayn and Yajus and Majus and others where this is a different thing altogether because you're saying this is another reality in which it seems to be physical 
in which there's a physical barrier, a physical dam over a mountain and a community, you know, living underneath it. And why, why can't we not see it with our technology, with satellites? We should have seen it already. I mean, it's impossible for not to detect them and they will come out one day and so on. So you are now using the understanding that this refers to some kind of just normal physical um, human beings like creatures that are there that we should have detected already okay that's that's your that's your paradigm in which you're assessing if this information or this narr narratives is against science and scientific understanding of the physical world i cannot accept that to be true and hence extension is there cannot be a god that exists that doesn't even follow because that narration no, example, well you're, let me, let me you're, finish my, that narration for example let's say this information is coming from a book called x and that information is incorrect that doesn't mean the creator doesn't exist that could be a book that is misunderstood that could be a book that information is diluted corrupted whatever right it's not a direct link on the existence of the creator and that's what i think brothers hashim and muris is talking about the existence of the creator is independent of these kind of things you can actually verify the existence even without going to any religious texts or not you can do that separately but when it comes to the quran for example of course it needs to stand to scrutiny it should not go against the facts of reality as we know it but there's a slight problem with this you see there are many examples where we found um communities in in amazon or somewhere around there outside the understanding of you know you know, you know the the developed civilizations they were discovered much much you know in recent times before that they weren't so it doesn't mean that we have the technology of all these things that we can detect it what if these creatures for example are such that god has made because that's how the hadith tells us the Quran is, you know, some information, but Hadith goes into explicitly talking about more. They are going to be released at some point before the end of times. Okay, this is what they're going to do. They're going to plumage and they're going to do all this destruction and so on. That means there is a power of God which is preventing these elements or creatures to come to our realities and then we mix and we see and interact and so on. For, for a reason, they're kept hidden. So that could be in a way, so they're not detectable. Now, we cannot detect, for example, a lot of things with our detectors because of the capacity and the range and so on and so forth. We're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth who is able to keep things hidden with some kind of hiding elements. They're not able to be seen, for example. It's not unreasonable to affirm or assert that if god wants to keep something hidden even within this earth you won't be able to find it because there might be some ways god, god is actually hiding it with okay for example we are discovering rays and uh radiations that we didn't even see but now we are able to detect them okay with our science and technology previously we said they don't exist now we realize you press a remote and your tv goes switched on you can't see anything but in the past for example this was not conceivable that there's something there going from your remote to the tv now we are aware of these things so god at his disposal he may have so many things that will keep these things hidden from us it's not inconceivable that does not somehow automatically prove that the existence of god is in question or even the veracity of this book is in question that is the you know, small point I want to make. Does that make sense, Michael? Yes, I understand radio waves, and we 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 don't see dark matter before. We, there's all sorts of things we don't know. Okay, first of all, you said my extension was from this book to there being no God. That's incorrect. My extension was that this you're claiming this is a book from God. Therefore, I think your book and your God are not correct. Obviously, I could be wrong. Um, you mentioned. A lot of things in there. Uh, so first, let me ask you this. If I can get a yes or no question, answer it, we appreciate it. Are Gog and Magog children of Adam and Eve? No, I don't think so, as far as I remember. Mm. Okay. I've read Hades, I thought, to the opposite. That yeah, they were Hades. humans. Well, I could be wrong. But okay. even if they're children of Adam and Eve, 
what's the logical conclusion that you're trying to make? I, I said, mm -hmm. if they're prevented from being detected, I didn't say right. they are a creature that something by their own nature or natural makeup, they're undetectable. That's not what okay. I said. Well, then I was going to follow up. Are they on Earth? Or do you, are you saying they're in another dimension? The story they're on Earth. Of, they're on Earth. 1890, right? The, the cave, 1894, mentions. No, they are on um, Earth. Yeah. Okay, so they're on Earth. Now, when they come out, right? So they dig at the wall every day, and they're almost through it. And then the leader says, we'll come back tomorrow and finish it. And then Allah rebuilds the wall. And then one day he won't, I guess. But there is a tiny pinhole in it or something. So they'll come pouring forth what, like locusts. Right. And they'll devour everything. They'll get to uh, the lake in, in Palestine and the front ranks of the army will drink the entire lengths, the entire lake before the back of the army gets there. Uh, I'm not sure. Is Jesus alive in this? Because you get down to like twelve hundred people right in a cave and then they shoot their arrows up at Earth. Kind of funny. You mentioned the, un the uncontacted tribes and the Amazon. I think they used to throw their spears at little Cessnas when they flew over them and stuff. Um, but anyways, they shoot their arrows up. They come back with blood on them. So they say, we've killed the people of the earth. Now we've killed the people of the sky as in the angels. And then Allah will send a worm to dig into their necks and they'll all die. And then birds with the necks of camels will come pick them up and throw them in the sea. And then rain will wash away their blood and stuff. Is, do I have that right? I'm not familiar with that details. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, so just a couple things. Um, first, you're, you are um, jumping to the stories of, of an understanding of what can potentially be, right? So like, let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Um, let's say I say that it, towards the end times, they're going to overrun the world. When, when I say that, do you envision like billions and billions and billions of these guys just coming out of the woodwork? Sure. If, okay. if they're number so let me give you a scenario. God forbid World War Four. Okay. There are nukes. Huh? What's that? <laughs> are you going to make God, God, God nukes instead of people? Or no? No, 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 no. Let's just say World War Four happens, right? And there is nuclear warfare from, from our side and, and, and the rest of the worlds, right? And now all these big bombs land and the human populace drops to 100,000. Do you still picture billions and billions and billions of these guys coming out of the woodwork? I mean, I suppose the lake could have dried up and been very small in the story. That... Right. So what's happening is you have this idea in your head of sure. like this... You know, because because the way that I think of the end times, man, and again, this is just my own personal reflection has nothing to do with with what I you know, what really is going to happen. My own personal reflection is that the world is going to be a, a lot smaller. It's not that we're just going to be overwhelmed with all these bodies everywhere and, and yada, yada, yada. Right. So I think it's important that when you're having these personal thoughts that you, you recognize what you're mentally projecting that you think is going to happen. Now, to take it back before all that, I want to tell you that none of that is important in regards to the actual fundamental belief of there being a deity. So what's happening is, is see, we believe that Shaitan is playing a trick on you right now. Mm -hmm. Now, you might call us nuts, right? But we believe what's happening to you is He's literally whispering in your ear. The West West is saying, look at these guys. These guys are nut jobs. They're telling you that there's going to be some crazy amount of, you know, people that are coming out of the woodwork that you can't see anywhere and no technology is ever found. And there's going to be worms in their neck and blah, 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 blah. You see what I'm saying? And when I put it to you in a different perspective, it doesn't sound so crazy or nutty anymore. Right? Sure. So but the problem with the problem with that perspective is there is a hadith where uh, Muhammad is asked by some of the companions, how many of us will go to heaven? Mm -hmm. And he says, or maybe it's hell or whatever. He said, like, 
only one out of every thousand people will go to heaven. Okay. Right? That's and they're fine. like, well, but then they're like, whoa, whoa, hang on. I think they're thinking this isn't such a great deal. Why are we becoming this religion? And then he says, well, but 90, 999 of those thousand in hell will be of Gog and Magog. So okay. they not only have to outnumber the population of the earth, but mm -hmm. they have to outnumber the population of everyone who has ever lived. Mm -hmm. Or or you're committing another mental projection and you're not fully understanding the hadith in regards to how the prophet Islam, would um, eloquate his speech. So let me just kind of try to co-correct you a bit. Mm -hmm. Could it be possible that he was talking about a great majority of people not making it to Jannah and a great majority of people going towards the hellfire and telling you that in relation to what uh, Gog and Magog and the people that are of Jannah, it being vastly different. Doesn't matter. That, I, I understand that you're you're kind of hooked on the numbers, and I I for one love numbers, right? But sometimes I have to remove myself from being in this standpoint of overly analytical and just taking things for absolute face value. So, is it possible that he could have just been accentuating the vast difference of who goes where? Yeah, sure, I suppose yeah. it could be metaphorical to some degree. Cool. I appreciate your honesty and that's that's the thing so what i'm saying is like i respect that you looked that hadith up but now it has to be understood in relation to what was actually contextually going on and how was the prophet trying to um press a particular point or something like that right now again i'm gonna i don't mean to backtrack but none of this matters none of these mat none of these hadith matter nothing matters unless you go based on the fundamentals that God does in fact exist, that he did in fact send a messenger, that he did give us this message and so on. So what I would want to commit time to is to iron out the, the um, doubts that are causing you from coming to the conclusion that this supreme being does in fact exist. I think that would be time well spent. Yeah, inshallah. Next, uh, okay, next, next time you're, you're here, Michael, by the way, sure. earlier you asked the question about uh, Yajuj and Majuj or Magan, uh, Magan, what's the other one? Gog and Magog. Uh, or Gog Magog. and Magog are, Yajuj, are, Majuj. are children of uh, Adam. The yes. answer to that is yes, they are actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's no difference of opinion on this. And this is actually in Bukhari and in Muslim. But sure. look, again, we are talking about end times. You know, end times can be, there can be several interpretations. There can sure. be, you know, we don't know about this, but I don't think, you know, when you no. stand in front of Allah, Allah is going to ask you any of these questions in order for you to be saved or not. Yeah. The, the primary questions still are going to be there, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in, in Allah and his Rasul, these are the primary questions. So, you know, the earlier, uh, when I asked you earlier, what if uh, God is true, you know, the uh, Pascal's wager as you in, uh, interpreted it, what if that was a true, you know? If you're understanding that there is no God, then none of us take any any risk. But if God is true, the angels are true, hell and heaven is true, you're taking a mega risk. You can't just stand in front of Allah and say that I heard all this, and it's not like you're you're ignorant, mashallah, you're you're well read on these things. So in the age of information, you know, ignorance is a choice. So you sure. cannot have that excuse of ignorance on the day of judgment. You reject it. The existence of God as an atheist, and that is going to be the primary question. The first question in the grave is Man Rabbuka. Yes, who is your Lord? Who is your God? And if you fail in that stage, every other stage is like going to be failure, okay. isn't it? And, and I know there's people waiting, and you can drop me yeah. anytime, but I got one quick question for y'all. Why didn't you just... save it for next time? I know you got a All lot right. of questions. Look, we didn't ban you, we let you talk, we give you time. Excellent. Thank We've you. We've been respectful to you. Yeah. Your, yeah, your 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 dab is much better than Hamza's. Not that yeah, we're, we're not we're not uh, comparing <laughs> anyone, but all I'm saying is that come with something more, much productive questions next time. Okay, I'll, I'll write some things down. My my head tends to spin off on different things. That's okay. cool, man. That's cool. All, all right. right, take care, Michael. Have a good one, y'all. Bye bye. See you, Michael. See you.